Daniel Farrar, man, leader of cult rap, and I'm rocking with hot new hip hop. You already know what's up. It's the beginning of, of what you see. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so many artists that are, that, that once they emerge out of North Carolina, like, it's gonna be crazy. We got a few right now. You know, you got J. Cole, you got the baby, of course, myself. You got a few other artists coming out of North Carolina making some noise. But you have people that their wave haven't even hit. And they gonna, I mean, we got a little spotlight on us now. I'm talking about they're gonna sh shine like the, the, the bat signal on that bitch, though, in a, in a few years, though, for real. We got some crazy talent coming up out of North Carolina. Like, real talk. You know, my lifestyle is pretty much the same. I do a lot of ducking when I'm in Charlotte, though. You know what I'm saying? I do a lot of ducking, like, uh, old habits and stuff like that, places where I used to go. I try not to be a creature of habit in Charlotte because I still feel like there's this lingering energy of past shit that I done done before music that I'm always trying to escape. I feel like I'm always, like, being like escaping something when I'm in the city. So I spend a lot of time with my kids when I'm there or trying to create some type of content for the music. And the rest of the time, I'm just ducking, for real. Like, like for real, like low key somewhere where I feel safe. You feel what I'm saying? Cause that city just don't, I don't feel as safe as I used to there. Not that I feel like somebody gonna harm me, but I don't feel safe in my process just to be out and about everywhere. So I'm with my kids or trying to create some type of musical content, whether that's in a studio, or a music video, I'm um, ducked off for real, just chilling, trying not to be seen. I got 14 projects. See what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You talking about back catalog, like these, and, and that's, why I'm, that's why I'm so excited. I'm like, man, and I own all of the music for real. So once it hit, like damn digital streaming, you know, like I said, we're trying to collect the analytics on our own. So I want people to, I, I'm gonna start putting these things up on leaderofcorrap.com. So once the wave actually catching people actually, not even the wave, but once people actually start taking notice, like in a major way, they can, we can lead them straight to the side. We taking it back to that grassroots way of connecting with the fan base that, that way I don't have to blast on Instagram that I have a show and 10% of my following engage because everybody's not a real fan. Some people are just spectators, but when I got this real, real organic fan base that has followed me from Instagram to my domain, which is leaderofcorap.com, and I have their personal information, I send out a personal invite. These people are my fans. They're gonna come, you know what I mean? Everything that people are seeing people do now on social media, I did, but when people had to get on the computer, everybody has a phone. But everybody wasn't on the blogs, on the computer. And that's how my fan base, my white fan base grew like that because they were on the computer, on the blogs. A lot of street guys, they weren't on a computer looking up Not Right to Dope Boys, Pitchfork, Fader, all of that. They didn't care. Every street guy got a phone now and they on the gram, you know? And so it's just like, damn, trying to, and I didn't have to be on the internet every day. You know, I was doing things like dropping 25 videos in a year, like crazy working, but I didn't have to be on social media every day. I was working. You know, now social media is a job. I wake up, I got to be on social media every day. I posted three times today. I posted a picture since I've been in here. I posted an inspirational video. I went live while I cooked a meal for Instagram this morning. Do you know what I'm saying? I've been crazy consumed just today with social media and this shit every day. I was having a conversation and I was telling uh, a few guys I sat with two men at Spotify one day, Charlie Wall and Will, uh, who manages Wiz. And they was just telling me, they was like, man, De Niro, you know, you just got to be patient. Your time coming for the music that you make. Your time is coming. You know, uh, it's going to be a shift in the industry of music. You know what I'm saying? And um, when that shift takes place, all you have to do is be patient. And when it comes, the fact that you've been honing in on your craft and perfecting your craft and staying firm on your mission statement, once that resurgence happened of the, of, of the content, like social commentary and music, you're gonna be straight. And that shit always play in my mind, you know what I mean? Even when I have hard times that play in my head. I think you're gonna find a way to do whatever it is you wanna do. I don't care. Like, Dudes that rap don't take all their drugs on the road with them, but they always find drugs in every city. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, for me, that was like, so I went and did the, the um, uh, Black Balloons, the Taboo Tour with, with Denzel Curry. And uh, I came on to assist him as a personal trainer, too. And um, 
a person that's on my team, she went and found every single gym in close proximity to the venue in the hotel, every single vegan, vegetarian restaurant in every city that we went to. So that way when we touched every single grocery store that was conducive for our food choice. So it's like, we are, a dude touched down in LA, he already know where to smoke at. He already know where to lean at. He already know where the, where the women at. He already know, he done mapped this out. We mapped it out. When you're serious about something, you're gonna map that shit out. We mapping it out. Like, I'm serious about it. It's, you know, my lifestyle ain't gonna be contingent upon what city I'm in. Like, I'm gonna figure it out. Where the fuck can I eat? I'm gonna figure that out. Like, we mapping it out. It just depends, because every day I don't go to the gym. You know, I might feel like working out outside. Sometimes I call Brandon, we'll meet up at the park on, on Lafayette and get it in and, at the park. And now I've been having like those two hour gym sessions where my mind literally goes into another place and space. And I stop feeling the need to rush in these sets, like having those set workouts of like, oh, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna do four sets of arms and this and this and this and this and this is my workout and I'm gone. I'm literally like exhausting whatever body part I wanna work out. I was in the gym today, like two hours I did arms, I, I did uh, tricep, bicep, and I'm always gonna do my core, you know what I mean? And, it's, it's, and legs. I'm doing legs like three times a week because I got little ass legs, so I gotta get my legs up, you know what I mean? So uh, I don't really have a real regimen. I do what my body feels and what it needs. So I do core every day, but I do legs three times a day. And, and other than that, I do whatever I feel for real. Um, so now I'm just like recently diving into this whole vegan. And I hate saying like, oh, vegan, man, vegan, vegan. I hate that. That's so, you know what I'm saying? That shit wild to me. But um, yeah, so I, like, I'm in the vegan thing now. You know, I cut the dairy out. I was vegetarian before, but you know, I would jump back between that and pescatarian while I would do fish and this and that. My ex-girlfriend really put me down years ago. You know, she was the first ever vegetarian I had, you know, had in my square that close, you know, where I could actually see the lifestyle and it was real. She would wake up and make me these big ass plates of fruit with water like every morning and I'm like, damn, how much money do she spend on fruit first off to do this every morning? You know what I'm saying? Like every morning she wasn't missing no mornings. I'm like, yo, she got to be going and re up when I'm asleep at the grocery store because every morning, big plate of fruit. And it just made me feel so good, like spiritually, mentally, physically, when I would eat like that every morning, then I'll go back to Charlotte and eat like trash. And then after a while, I was like, man, this don't make sense. Like eating like this makes me feel good. Eating like that makes me feel like shit. And insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results. So I was like, yeah, I know I'm not crazy. So I was like, slowly but surely, I started leaving the meat alone. I was like only fucking with chicken. And then I went cold turkey and did the vegetarian shit and had like this meat breakdown. <laughs> and I relapsed and ate a burger and shit. And, and then I got back on it. And this time it was more genuine. Like I did the research on what I should eat, you know, cause I was dropping weight what I should eat to maintain weight. So her, she really sparked it and it was genuine to me. So I just kept it going. When I be taking my son to the Chick-fil-A and they be getting them motherfucking Chick-fil-A nuggets and I see that Polynesian, my mouth be watering. I be having to be like, man, get this shit. Man, sometimes I'll pull up to the window, roll the back window down and have my kids get their own food. Get your own shit, man. I ain't touching that chicken. Cause I be really like, my mouth be quivering like when I'm up at Chick-fil-A and I be wanting that spicy chicken sandwich, I be like, damn, with the pepper jack cheese, though. Like, uh, I be like, damn, let me get the Southwest Chipotle base with no meat, just the base. Like, fuck. And they always hit me with bullshit like, are you sure you don't want chicken? Give me the damn base, girl. Shit, stop asking questions, you know what I mean? The highest high and the lowest low since 2013. Man, I've been in this shit for a minute, for real. Um, highest high. I honestly don't feel like I've had that high, high, high moment, even in having a major label record deal 2014. That was a high for me, but I still felt like it was so much more. I would, I would say uh, going on tour, having that bow down tour with Denzel Curry, that was like a high for me because I love to perform. So performing two months straight, on the road having consistent shows back to back. That was like the high for me. The low was, I would say last year for real, uh, cause I felt unfulfilled, uninspired. 
you know, when it came to rap. I, I stopped doing music. I did like three songs last year. I went to barber school. <laughs> like, I was just like ready to give up for real because it's like I've been at it for so long and I felt I was running out of gas. You know, I was losing momentum, not in the music industry, but just momentum with self and being in my career. And I, I just felt like I was losing myself. So I actually uh, took time off to recalibrate and just, uh, you know, get back. And I, I hate the term finding myself because I was never lost technically, but just getting back to being one with myself. It mostly came from like being aligned with myself. You feel what I'm saying? Cause no matter what, like no matter how the label trying to stifle you or they trying to hold you back from this, that, as long as you like align with self and you know your purpose and you know where you're going, eventually you're gonna get there. Nobody could deter you from like, you know, the path, you feel what I'm saying? And I just wasn't aligned. Like, I, I felt that, like I wasn't aligned no more. You feel what I'm saying? Like on a personal level and all of those other things added really started to weigh on me. You know, the fact that I had been in music, like you say, man, I was on here 2013, it's 2019. You know, we're approaching 2020 soon. Like, you know, and I was in it three years before that. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, damn, to watch guys who haven't been in it nearly as long as I've been in the music industry, uh, you know, come in and gain financial stability and, and gain this and gain that. It was just like, damn, and, and, and when you start to compare yourself, that create despair. So it was a lot of things, bro, that factored in. I just really had to get back balanced and aligned, you know what I'm saying, to get back to where I am right now in this space. I'm learning not to have expectation for real. You know what I'm saying? Because I get let down because I expect, like, I, I didn't think I would be here right now. If you would have asked me four years ago, I wouldn't tell you I have another kid still pursuing music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, that's because I had expectation of where I should be and, and when things are supposed to happen for me. But when you let go and really understand that the most I got a plan for you, I ain't a super religious dude. I ain't out here preaching the gospel, but I do understand that God got a plan for me. And a lot of times I got to get out of my way and stop having expectations as to where I feel I should be and allow this shit to happen. You know what I mean? So now I'm, I'm, I'm like stopping the resistance and doing more of like allowing. You feel what I'm saying? So that's where I'm at. Like, so I ain't really got expectation for real. Cause if I had expectation, I'd be a multimillionaire. My shit would be streaming in the billions. But I ain't resisting no more though. I'm just letting shit come. You know what I mean? Hey, real talk. I heard this Anderson Park lyric. He was like, they wondering what's going, what's going to happen five years from now. But what about today? You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about today. Like, fuck consistent. I've, bro, I've always been consistent. Whether I've dropped a lot of music or not, I've been consistent in music for nine years, bro. Well, I've never not dropped music. Sometimes I didn't drop as much. But yeah, this year is like, it's a resurgence of dropping a lot of material, though. You feel me? Like, yeah, I'm on the ass.